So the Pacers supposedly called up the Jazz and were like, hey, what would it take to trade Lowry Markkinen? And that was before they, you know, did the Pascal Siakam deal. And the Jazz showed no interest in trading Markkinen. Zach Lowe of ESPN says, Markkinen has emerged as an all-star borderline all-NBA player in the league. Basically the closest thing to Dirk Nowinski we've had since Dirk Nowinski. And by all accounts, any team would have to grossly overpay to consider taking him off of the Utah Jazz's roster. Now he signed through the 24 to 25 season and he's expressed returning and remaining long-term with the Jazz. And he is rumored to be signing a renegotiation and contract extension kind of similar to what like DeMontis Sabonis Miles Turner did last year. So keep um imagine that. I'm, I'm very excited to see that. I want to hear your guys' thoughts on this one. This is the rest of what we heard. So the Jazz are allegedly continuing to build around Mr. Yes. The man, the pretty boy himself, Larry Markkinen. As Wojnarowski says, Markkinen is more than likely going to get a contract rene- renegotiated and extended by Utah as he's their new face of the franchise. It makes sense. And with Lowry, what you have right there is a guy who, especially with what they talked about the other with earlier today, how the parity across the league, you're not going to have these three headed teams anymore. You're going to have two headed teams. And Lowry's good enough to be a two headed monster. And at this point, what you have with Lowry is a guy who can, can average 30 points a game, a guy who's going to be on contract for the foreseeable future. He's seven foot tall. He can, he can shoot threes at a high clip or get to the rim in just two steps. He has the ability to shoot from three, but has taken that step to be an all-star, all-NBA player. He's basically the athletic modern day, the more athletic modern day Dirk. The confidence is through the roof. His consistency has followed, and he's buried early criticism of rebounding and defending and become better on those things. And he can play the five effectively in spurts, but he's best paired with a rim protector like Walker Kessler. And he's going to finish his career as a multi-time all-star, maybe an all-NBA player. So it makes sense that you want to build through this guy because all you need to put is defense around him. Mark Stein of the Stein line confirmed what we knew. The Utah Jazz are looking to trade John Collins. Yes, yeah, so sadly, John Collins didn't work out this season. And, you know, that was for um, one could say a multitude of reasons. I just think he just wasn't a fit and they were hoping that he would. But the cool thing about John Collins this year is he's playing 28 minutes a night, which is actually the lowest amount of minutes he's played since his rookie season. And he's putting up 13.7 points, eight rebounds. He's having one of the best rebounding years of his year season of his career, as well as shooting the the three point shot incredibly well. He's right now shooting 47.6% from the field, which is the, you know, 60th best in the league while he is also shooting from three. Also, right now, he is a guy who is letting it loose at 37% with four attempts a night, which is a career high on how many three-pointers he's shooting. And at this point, what are, what are you getting with John Collins? If people are asking, like, what, what does John Collins give you? At this point in his career, who well, I'm a big fan of Sean Collins. He is this guy who is freakishly athletic for his size. He's six foot 11 with a seven foot wingspan. He's a freakish athletic guy who can play power forward or center. He can finish through his opponents, get above the rim. He also possesses great skill level. Like he has the perfect style of play when he tries to be a great fit at the power forward position for today's modern NBA. He can space the floor with his three-point shot. He can attack the rim and draw a foul. He's defensively, he should be a really good player, but his defensive impact isn't anywhere near where it should be. His effort on the defensive end wanes. He just doesn't move his feet well on defense. Sometimes he can show bad body language and not show good effort when the team isn't doing well. But for me, I mean, I've always been a John Collins fan. I've always been team johnny boy but i don't know i i'm a, I'm a real understander that john collins and his contract aren't easy to move so here i've said this before rashawn holmes maxi kleba and a second round pick for john collins to the dallas mavericks that's really not that bad of a move now another team is i think the indiana pacers the Indiana Pacers, though, if they were to do a deal like that, I think the, the thing that would hold them back is 
financially, I don't know if they have the the filler to take on that deal. Let me just look at it. So they're $36 million under the tax. So my understanding is they could probably just eat the money. So I take that back. So if the Utah Jazz were, so let's send John Collins over. That's $25 million the Pacers would be taking. And the Pacers would look at this and be like, okay, let's get rid of a contract we don't want. And what is a contract that they don't want? I think Jordan Wara would be someone they would move. And I know he's hurt, but I feel like he's the next guy that they would move is Jalen Smith. And they would give up at most a second round pick. I can't see them giving up anything more than so right here. Okay. So the Pacers, if they did Jordan Wara, Jalen Smith and a second round pick, problem is Pacers would have to cut have to cut more money and I don't they would have to give up like TJ McConnell and I don't know if that's even worth it at that point like the only other way I see that's the problem is like they legitimately would have to give up TJ McConnell and I just don't see that being worth it if you have to give up TJ McConnell so monetarily wise for this deal to work it would have to be Jordan Wara Jalen Smith, TJ McConnell, and can it just be Jordan Warrior and TJ McConnell? Does that get the deal done? No. You'd have to keep Jalen Smith in the deal. So obviously at that point, if you're the the Pacers, for example, who we know in the past they've had interest in in a deal like this, I just I'm I'm just very much surprised by what it is so this would have to be a three-player deal and then you would have to hope that someone who's like not making any money like a luka shamanich could just be a trade filler so the easiest way for a team like the pacers to do this deal john collins and luka shamanich for tj mccollin jalen smith and jordan war and i just don't think it's worth it in my opinion but john collins real quick i just wanted to say i just think it's an interesting situation due to the fact that john collins was a reclamation project and i knew that it was a it was a big one and what we talked about earlier was the utah jazz are open to trading john collins sources told andy larson of the salt lake tribune the quote is the 26 year old big man has had the lowest on court off court splits of any rotational player on the utah jazz the team has been frustrated with his slow uptakes on learning the jazz system on both ends of the floor according to larson He's missed his third straight game. He is averaging 14 and a half points and 8.6 rebounds. He is shooting 38% from three, 48% from the field. He's like, look, it's, it's just frustrating because he's providing some floor spacing and some defending, but it's, he, it's just like, besides the solid shooting and rebounding, there isn't there. His iffy performance plus the $77 million he's over he's owed over the next three years is going to make it difficult for anyone who's going to want to take the seven-year bet. But I just find it weird that he's a guy who, and I know, I know what you think of John Collins, but we're three years removed from him being a 17 points per game score, or like really two years removed from him being 16, 17 points, four years removed in the 2019-20 season where he averaged 21.6 10 rebounds like almost two blocks and was like a like a borderline all-star so my thought is what's going on like you said is like the year before he was still a 19 and a half point per game score the year after that they added daniel gallinari and bogdan and he was still an 18 points per game guy it's just i mean one person brought this up in my comment section that he hasn't been i think in 2020 was the year he got caught with peds like taking peds and everything's been down and i, I don't know how much correlation i just looked at john collins like let, let, you know i'm a fanboy of john collins and i always thought he was a guy who was just after you know him having his fall from grace i was like he's just a coach away he's a coach away from figuring it out and this is because like he has the freak athleticism you want from a guy who can play the four or the five. He can finish through opponents and above the rim. 
He's got great skill. He's like the perfect style of play for a power forward in today's game. He can space the floor from three, attack the rim. And defensively, yeah, his impact is nowhere near where it should be, but the effort on that end isn't there. But if it was, like, he could be good at defense, but it just shows bad body language and doesn't give the best effort. So I... I so the... I think the whole thing to wrap it up is like, I don't even know. Like if they're going to trade John Collins, I think they just give him a second round pick and say, good luck. Good luck. Thanks for taking him off our hands. It didn't work for us. So hope you enjoy him. Cheers. I don't know. It's not a good situation in my opinion. And I feel bad for the guy and I feel bad.